Okay, then you you saw the the motorcade turn the corner. And yeah, they turned out. the corner and they started coming down. And the first thing I remember hearing are what I thought was firecrackers, because Kennedy threw his hands up, and I heard bang bang. Now there could have been a third bang. I can't swear to that one. But I know there was two bangs very close together, and I thought it was firecrackers because of the arms going in the air. And it was way off to my left and above. So, you know, I'm just kind of like, what a stupid thing to throw firecrackers. And as they came down, the last shot that we heard was right in front of us. And it was like the same sound far off and to the left. But I saw his head open up, and I saw the brains coming down. So by this time, of course, I knew it wasn't firecrackers. But those were the only sounds I heard. Now, to uh, clarify it a bit, that would be towards the school book depository building? Towards or? our left and above. Which would be in the general area yes. of the sixth yeah. floor window. Yes. You now, excuse me, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. That's you right. didn't turn and look. No, no neither one on. of us, neither yeah. Mr. Zapruder or I, turned ever. We kept our attention on what was happening exactly in front of us. And if you look at his film, there's very little jumping. It's steady, considering very, very what steady. was going on. And that's why I'm saying the sound we heard, the third sound, still sounded a distance. Because if it would have been as close as everybody's trying to tell us, you know, 20 feet behind us, we both... Fence, in other words. Yeah, mm -hmm. we would have jumped sky high. Now, you said you did hear another sound. Okay, after, you know, he fell through going under the triple underpass. And we're both still standing there, and then I heard this crash. And that's when both Mr. Zapruder and I kind of, like, did a, a second or whatever you want to call it. Double there was a double, there's a park bench on the other side of the car, the cement thing. And they were sitting in a park bench, and they dropped their pop bottle on that cement there and, cra and cracked it. That's what kind of woke us up, and that's when we got down off of the concrete. But, but that sound was like five, eight feet from us. Uh, with that, yeah, we did hear, but that's the only other sound other than that faraway sound that we heard. Would that sound was not close enough to the other shots, though, to be mistaken for a shot? Do you think? No, I, it was it was glass hit and concrete. Distinctly, yeah, I, I knew exactly what it was when it hit. Mm -hmm. What is your analysis of the possibility of a gunman, a second gunman, being behind that picket fence? Well, after looking at the film and doing a lot of reading and other etc., I would say there's a very good possibility there was somebody back there, but they had a silencer. I don't know who was shooting where, but there was nobody standing behind us that close with a rifle without a silencer on it, because uh, that would have had us jumping. That, uh, it would have that gone film, right by that your film face. would have been yeah. bounced all over the place. Yeah, because literally it would have gone right past our ears. 